Another assumption that can only be met once we have collected data is the assumption that there are no missing data in our data set. Now, why do we care if there are missing data? I mean, if they're not there, if they're simply missing, can't we just ignore them? No, and here's why. It is the lion that you don't see that eats you. If you look really closely, you can see Ted hiding in the grass. Missing data can come back to bite you. And therefore, it is important that we know how much missing data we have. Hopefully, we can figure out why those data points are missing. And we need to have some skills to know what to do about those missing data points before we go on with our analysis. Parametric tests assume that we have a complete data set. If we are missing data, those missing data points can skew the conclusions that we draw. It depends upon why the data points are missing. Let me show you, in general, the ways that we could address missing data. The first is that we could use listwise deletion and remove any cases that have any missing data from our analysis. Any case with even a single missing data point is entirely removed from our analysis. Now, already, you can spot the limitation to this approach, and that would be loss of power. You are decreasing the sample size. Therefore, you would only use list-wise deletion if you've checked your data set and determined that 5% or fewer of the cases have missing data and that you have a large enough data set to compensate for those losses. A second option is called pairwise deletion, in which we exclude cases from a particular analysis if they have missing data for the variable being used in that analysis. The trade-off here is the fluctuation of sample sizes. That t-test that you're running has 48 people included, but the correlation has 51, and that all of those nicely balanced cases that we had for our one-way ANOVA now have unbalanced sample sizes, because people are being included or excluded depending on what analysis we're running. This can also be confusing for readers, because we said that we had 60 participants, and yet that number isn't appearing in any of the analyses that we're running. That fluctuation means that our sample size changes for every analysis. Another way that we could deal with missing data is using mean substitution. This was the old way of addressing missing data. You would simply substitute the mean for that variable of all of the other cases. Now, on the surface, that seems like a good approach. But think about what would happen if instead of replacing two or three missing values with the mean, what if we replaced every value in that variable with the mean? All of the scores would collapse to a constant, and we would have zero variability. If we were using a test like ANOVA, the analysis of variance, we couldn't make it run because there is now no variance. When you use mean substitution, you reduce the variability in your data set. And that's why it is generally discouraged as a way of dealing with missing data. Another approach that has been used is regression substitution, where we take all of the other variables in the data set and create a regression equation using the variable with the missing value as our dependent variable and predict what that missing value would have been based on scores from other cases. Now, that is a good start. However, there are some limitations, and what we're going to find is there's another approach that uses a similar technique, but averaging multiple attempts at predicting what the score should have been. And that's called multiple imputation. Ultimately, when we're dealing with missing data, we want to know what would that score have been if we actually had that score? We can use various forms of imputation to make a prediction of what that score might have been. 
we could use single imputation for an individual who has left out one score on a scale. A given subscale is measuring a construct, so all four items should be measuring essentially the same thing. This individual has answered with values 3, 4, and 4, but for some reason skipped that remaining item. How could we replace that missing data point? We could use the mean for that individual, add up 3, 4, and 4, divide by 3, substitute that number. We could use the median. 4 was the most frequently occurring score, and maybe that should go into that place. So there's no clean way to do this, but it is replacing values on an individual level based upon data that that particular individual has provided. Then there is multiple imputation, which has something in common with that regression that I described earlier. But instead of using a single regression equation to make a prediction, we're going to use multiple rounds of predictions that would then be averaged to give us what that score would have been if we had that score not missing in our data set. This multiple imputation is usually considered the best option. However, it is complex and it can't be done except using some very specific software. So we won't be doing this in our course.